Well, g'day guys. Welcome back to yet another episode for Jetfish Off-Road. So, I am here in the Marin Up sort of, well, near Dwelling Up sort of area really in WA. And I thought today, I might do a quick review on the Midsale Oil Train Canopy. So let's jump inside of the canopy. Let's have a really good look at it. Uh, I'll show you right through the electrical system. I'll show you through, you know, the fridge that I run, the fridge slide that I run, the drawers, the shelving that I've put in it, uh, and just how it's actually changed how I go camping for the better. Honestly, this thing is just fantastic. Let's jump inside and have a look. Well, there you go, guys. So as you can see, she's pretty well loaded up. Uh, this is basically how I would go away. I mean, I've got a, got a few more bits and pieces in here that I would normally put in. So, you know, food and other bits. Uh, but basically, this is the kitchen side. So I've got my fridge here, I've got the fridge slide. I've also got the drawer here. This drawer, I usually keep all my, uh, all my cooking utensils and other bits and pieces, you know, sort of all your, your, your tea towels and garbage bags and the good old, uh, old knife roll with all the sharp bits and pieces in it, not to mention, of course, uh, a couple of Yetis and uh, a couple of drinking cups and stuff. And the part that I really like about this is the, uh, is, look at that, the bar's open. <laughs> bit early for it at the moment, but uh, you get the drift anyway. So you can use that as a bit of a cooking surface. You can use it as, uh, you know, the bar or whatever you'd like really. Um, but one of the best things I actually really like about it is the fridge slot as well. So now, We'll talk about that a little bit later on because I'm planning on making a couple of changes to the kitchen setup and that will unfortunately include probably changing out the fridge slide for maybe the stand-up fridge. Uh, we'll talk about why I'm potentially looking at going that way and why in the first place I went with the drop-down fridge slide. In a nutshell, the setup, well, it's the Mitz Alloy Evo 2 canopy on their tray. Now, the tray itself is a 1650 millimetre long tray okay as well as the 1500 mil canopy now that's 1500 mil long but it's also 960 mil high so with the 79 series land cruisers okay you can actually go a little higher with the canopy that's mainly because of the height of the cab the height of the uh, the headboard and so on so that just gives you a little bit more room which is fantastic space is a premium no matter what type of four-wheel drive setup you're running so let's cut into it let's have a quick squeeze so this is the Clearview ES220 fridge slide. It's actually a 220 plus, and the plus stands for, well, you get a little tray that clips onto here. Let's open it up and have a bit more of a look at it. So it comes all the way out, and a little latch, and you pull it all the way down. Now what I like about the height of this is it's so much more accessible to be able to get into your fridge. All right, now I've got this set up there. This part, this half here is my fridge, and this half here is my freezer. So with the Clearview ES220 Plus fridge slide, uh, you actually get a little tray that goes on the end. And here, I usually keep it in here, just underneath where the fridge goes, which is kind of handy. So it comes in a nice little bag like that. So we'll open him up too. Nice and easy. Let's put that on there for the moment. On the underneath side here, you get these two little legs. They just fold out nice and easy and clip straight onto the end of the fridge slide. Move the bag up a little bit. And there you go. You got yourselves another little serving table, a little food prep area. I've actually used this as a, as a bait board when I'm out fishing a couple of times. So it is actually very, very handy, quite versatile as well. So I think um, if I do change the setup to the stand-up fridge, I'm gonna miss this because it's super, super handy. All right, let's get this packed up and move it in out of the way. Okay, so let's talk about the electrical system I got in the canopy. So it's full red arc. I went the full red arc ultimate package which when the time that I bought this um, and had it built by Mitz Alloy was the biggest and best system you could get at the time. Now they have since upgraded um, their specs. You can actually get the next package which I believe is called the Elite. So jump onto mitzalloy.com.au and have a look at their packages that they offer. Now they also offer the Enerdrive systems as well. I've not actually had a lot to do with Enerdrive. I have known that they've been uh, you know, a very good brand as well. Personally, for me, and it all comes down to personal choice, I went with Red Arc. Uh, I've had Red Arc in other vehicles and I wanted to use Red Arc again, so there you go. Now, the Red Arc system in here, like I said, it is the ultimate package that was offered by Mitz Alloy at the time. So you get two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, you also get the, uh, what is it, the battery manager 30, 
as well as the Red Arc TVMS, which is a total vehicle management system, and you get a 180 watt solar panel. Now that system has been fantastic for me. It's kept the fridge and freezer going. It's kept everything else charged. I think I've, I've even got a um, got a one of my well, actually my little portable GME handheld um, UHF there, a little five watt job. Uh, I keep that in there, keep my GoPro batteries charging up in here when I need to as well. Oh, and the Travel Buddy. That thing is awesome. I've cooked all sorts of things in there. Just got to remember to take them out of plastic wrapping, depending on what you're cooking. So that's the electrical system in a nutshell. Uh, I have added to it slightly with a power board on the other side, but I mean, that's just plugged in uh, through, to the, uh, through to the inverter's actual outlet itself. So all that does is just give me four GPOs on the opposite side. Honestly, it's this, this whole package, this setup, is perfect for me for my solo trips or my daddy-daughter trips when I take my daughter on little camping trips away as well. Um, it's perfect. Like, I, I couldn't ask any more from this package. I'm so, so happy with it. Maybe tweaking it in the future. There's a few little things there that I might sort of add to it, sort of maybe a ladder or uh, Mitz Alloy now come out with a, uh, a roof-mounted pantry system. They also come out with a proper slide-out pantry as well. Uh, this being the size of the canopy that it is at this point in time, I do not have enough room to be able to run that slide-out pantry. So next, well not next year, this year sometime, uh, looking to be over on the East Coast, I'm going to discuss some options with the guys at Mitz Alloy as well and um, sort of see what we can come up with, see what we can sort of jam-pack in there and uh, see how the setup goes from there. All right, that's this side of it. Let's hook around to the other side and uh, see what we've got over there. Okay, so we're on the right-hand side of the canopy at the moment. And what am I running in here? Well, there's a little bit going on. I've got a full-length tray, that sort of, it's roof-mounted, all right? So full-length roof-mounted tray up here. Now up here, I've got, a, I've got another chair, that's, you know, the Helinox chair, that goes in there perfectly. I've got the hammock when I want to use that. I've got my double burner gas top cooker, which likes to sing to me. <laughs> uh, I'll tell you what. It's the Coleman Fire Night one, all right? Now, what they profess with that is that it won't blow out, so that's awesome. But it sings your little tune as it's warming up the hot plate. It's rather annoying, but it is what it is. But still, it's a fantastic cooktop. All right, so then, let's get back into it. A uh, little jump starter pack if I need it. And uh, I've got one of the wall kits for the awning, as well as a, um, a fold-up solar blanket up there too. So that's a 200 watt hardcore solar blanket. So in this drawer here, I keep stuff like, you know, spare little gas bottle, and I've also got uh, my, uh, my camp oven. I've also got a couple of bags of tinder rolls and stuff. Just stuff for, you know, cooking, cooking with a fire while you're out there. I've got the billy in there as well. Uh, this drawer here, tools. I've got a, oh, I've got a collapsible bucket in there as well. Uh, keep a few nuts and bolts. I've got a socket set, a bag full of tricks as well. So cable ties. Uh, you have electrical tools, pliers, and bits and pieces, soldering iron, you just never know. Uh, <laughs> toiletries bag, you know. Well, you keep your toiletries in it, really, don't you? <laughs> that's basically what I've got on this side. Oh, and that there, that's my, uh, that's my four-way GPO sort of uh, thing. All it is is a little power board, you know, four outlets on it, so I keep my cameras charged up through there. And, uh, and off I go. That's the right hand side of the canopy in a nutshell. Now, we also have two, two side toolboxes. We've got one on the left and we've got one on the right. And we've also got a trundle drawer at the back. Now, we'll, uh, I'll explain what's going on with those at the moment, but because I run two water tanks in the, uh, in the tray, so I've got a 30 litre water tank in the headboard and I'm running a 60 litre water tank underneath as well. I like to have as much water as I can. I think 90 litres of water uh, for me, for what I need, you know, having a shower, uh, cooking, just general consumption, that 90 litres of water usually gets me around about a week. So it's not too bad. Need to be water savvy. So, you know, keep that in mind when you do go out camping. So for me, happy with that. These toolboxes, they're, they're lockable. They're not hooked up through to your central locking. So I'm not quite sure whether that's something the Mitz Alloy are looking at. The thing is that I've seen with it, if you're going to try and hook it up to your central locking, you're gonna lose a little bit of space on the inside of the door itself. So we'll just open up the two latches. All right, so what I mean by that is you could potentially lose more space here through the controllers or the wiring. I've not had a great look into it. Personally, it's not something that bothers me. I keep these locked up when I'm not, you know, not sort of out on the tracks anyway. But these things are great. So. 
they all come with dust seals. Um, I've had this when we went across the Nullarbor. Uh, it was absolutely pinging down with rain and uh, not a single drop of water gets inside either one of them or the back trundle drawer as well. Um, the dust, dust doesn't get past them. The seals work fantastic. I've, I'm, I'm super happy with those. Uh, what do I keep in it? Well, on the right hand side, I've just got a little crash pad canvas bag here just with some, uh, some extra straps and bits and pieces. Usually keep another extension lead in there as well. So if I pull up to a caravan park, need to get a bit of extra charge, I can do that. Um, I like these navigator bags as well. I think these are pretty handy. This bag here, I usually keep a set of jumper leads in it. I also keep a fresh water hose in there as well. So I'll so we'll open him up and have a bit of a squeeze. Yep, there we go. There's my fresh water fuel hose. Make sure guys that if you are going to get yourself a hose that you're gonna fill up your fresh water tanks with, that it is actually a food grade rated hose. You get these from Bunnings. I think it's a five meter hose. You can get all sorts of different lengths. And something else that's really handy to keep in there as well, guys, is one of these, uh, these tap fittings, all right? You never know where you're gonna end up. You need one of these. So keep one of those in there. I keep a couple throughout the car. Uh, one of those I'll keep definitely in the bag, as you can see. And uh, the other one will be in that little green tool bag I keep in the toolbox. The other thing I keep in here is a six ton uh, bottle jack. All right, that just stays in there, out of the way, nice and easy. Plenty of room in here, you know, get that in there. Switch him up to the back, roll this one up a little bit, and she's in. That's the right hand side toolbox. Let's jump over to the left hand side because I've got some special stuff over there that you'd love to take a look at. Okay, so now we're on the left hand side. Now, in here is all my air charging equipment. Again, it comes with the same latches, the same dust seals and that. But this side's quite unique. I'm running the ARB twin air compressor in here, connected up to a four litre tank. And I've also got the manifold in here as well, sort of tucked in just up under there. Um, now, I've never had an issue with this. One of the biggest things you need to do though, because you've got the, the air tank in there as well, is when you finish pumping up all your tires, just make sure that you know you empty the tank out. Gets rid of all that condensation that can build up in these things. So definitely up north over this Christmas New Year's period, uh, a little bit stickier up there, the humidity was a bit higher. Uh, definitely the heat was higher, that's for sure. Um, had to make sure after pumping up the tires, just fill up the tank a couple of times, let it drain out. You can see the amount of uh, condensation coming out the end of the hose. All right, so let's have a look at what I've got in here. So I carry another little navigator bag. I think this one actually came with the other bag. So super, super handy. I use this one just to keep the, the hand piece there for charging up the tires. Also got a few other little attachments in there for you know pumping up you know, kids footies and stuff like that. So that's in there. Now I also keep in there, oh, get one out at a time. I think both of them coming out though. All right, keep, whoops. I keep two of these air hoses. So I use one all the time, and the second one I usually keep just sort of wrapped up. So the reason I've got two is if I've got a trailer on, uh, when I used to have the boat trailers towing behind me, uh, I had enough room to be able to go and charge up the tires on that, uh, as well as helping other people out while I'm out. Um, if their compressor's failed or they don't have one or whatever else, just gives you a bit more length with it. All right, so that's all in there. I'll put that away in a moment. Um, and then I've just got a, uh, just a, a quickie air deflator through ARB at the moment. and. Uh, all seems to work quite well for me. Now we've had a look at this side, we'll jump around to the back, we'll have a look at the trundle drawer. All right, so we'll take this out to give you a bit of a look inside the drawer. All right, we'll move that out of the way. Okay, so in the drawer itself, like this is where I keep my recovery gear. Uh, it's also where I keep, you know, the hammer for the pegs, I got a little peg bag, and uh, just a small bag here that I keep the straps for the awning. So that is a 270 degree awning, so Heaps and heaps of coverage with that. Pretty happy. Uh, bit of a bit of a collection of some of the of some of the gear at the moment. When I mean, to keep the Max Tracks boss ring as well. I've used this to get myself out of a, a decent sticky situation. Uh, I had to do a double line pull with the winch. These things are pretty good. Super super happy. And of course the uh, Max Tracks fuse shackle as well. That's certainly got to work out. I did have a couple other ones there. Um, not quite sure what's happened to those. Whether they've sort of been borrowed and not given back. Oh, oh, look, I really don't know where they are. Doesn't really matter. Gonna get more, got some more coming anyway. All right, so yeah, definitely keep, keep some gloves. These gloves are great for when you're doing recovery work as well. You're not gonna smash your hands up. 
and what else? I keep some air filters in here. I keep some oil filters as well. So no matter where I go, I got a little bag of spares. So oil filter, spare fuel filter, and another fuel filter. This is a secondary fuel filter. Second set of gloves. Um, I have no idea why I keep two sets of gloves in here. Maybe because, actually no, these gloves are given to me. That's right. They're actually really good gloves. I've used those. Um, air filter underneath there. I have recently had to change out the air filter while I'm out on the road. Um, bit of a check, bit of a check over things before sort of travelling back down from Exmouth, and I thought, oh, let's check the air filter. Pulled it out, and it was cake full of crap. So I thought, well, look, let's change it out while we can. So, yep, got a new one in there now. Happy with that. Uh, always carry a couple of spares at home as well. You just never know. Uh, but yeah, recovery gear, a few tools, a few bits and bobs. Uh, nothing major. Tire puncture recovery kit as well. Repair kit, sorry. Haven't had to use that one yet. I have used it, uh, another one, on a couple of different occasions, but just not that one. All right, so that's it for all of inside of the back of the trundle drawer itself. It does have a seal as well. So dust seal, like as you can see, no dust gets in here. It's great. It keeps all the dust and all the water out and keeps all your gear nice and clean. All right, so let's put the cover back on and close it back up. All right, so as I mentioned before, I am running the Red Arc TVMS. So that's the Total Vehicle Management System, and that's hooked up through everything through here, okay? So with this system, I can turn on lights, I can turn them off. I can actually see what my battery status is, I can see my charge status, I can see, uh, well, a whole range of different things, actually, how much power I'm using, uh, how much power I'm putting into it via either, either solar or whatever. So let's have a bit more of a squeeze at that. With the screen now turned back on, you can see that at the moment I'm running about 98% battery charge. All right, and it's gonna take about an hour to recharge. So at the moment, there's a little dot there and that's the sun. So we can see that or not. But it's saying that I'm using solar at the moment to charge the batteries. So these buttons across here, all right, so I've got lights on or off. I've also got my 12 volt on or off, and at the moment you can see I'm charging up the, uh, the little GME handheld as well as the GoPro batteries. Now I'm also got on the other side there a 240 volt, and that one there turns on the inverter, and then just under that I've got a switch there to, to, that turns on the, uh, the Travel Buddy oven as well. So that's just a little 12 volt supply. So with the Red Arc TVMS system, you can actually sort of scroll through some of these menus. So we'll go through to there. So you've got display settings. You've also got you know, your Bluetooth settings. So you can actually Bluetooth to your phone as well. You can also put it in storage mode. You've got your actual settings for your battery management system as well. Distribution box settings. So there's a whole range of things there. But I usually leave it on this screen here because that's all I need it for. So there you go guys, that's a bit of a uh, sneak peek into my electrical system inside the canopy there, how I use it for what I need, what I actually run off it, and uh, you know how long it actually lasts me. So look, I get, with good sunlight, um, look, if I'm power savvy, same as being water savvy I guess, um, look, I can get up to about a week or so. Um, but then again, look, it depends as well, look, I usually only stop somewhere for one, maybe two nights, and then I'm driving again. Or even if I do stop for that one night, the next day, I'm out driving around, checking places out, doing this, doing that. So uh, for me, this system is absolutely perfect. I may, in the future, upgrade to an extra solar panel just because uh, I want to try and maximise the solar input to the, to the system. But um, honestly, I'm happy with it. And I love the way it looks as well. You get these little chevrons in it, uh, part of the Mitz Alloy logo, the guys have laser cut into things, and it looks 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 amazing looks really really good okay so one of the things i forgot to mention before was the insulation that i've put inside the canopy the reason i've done that is because last summer it was about 42 degrees for a few days there around the christmas and inside the canopy the temperatures reached approximately 52 to 53 degrees now the fridge and freezer were struggling the batteries well they were getting absolutely flogged so i knew straight up that's not good i needed to do something about it so thankfully when we went down to esperance for sort of Boxing Day and sort of on through to New Year's and that. Uh, you know, the temperatures were a little bit lower, so that was okay, I didn't mind it. But I knew for this summer, uh, I was definitely gonna do something about it. So what have I done? Well, I've gone down to my local uh, local Road Tech Marine, or you know, you can go to your hardware store or whatever, and I've purchased some marine engine room insulation. What is it? Well, it's just foam. It's about, about two centimeters thick or 20 mil. It's, it's sticky backed, and on the, uh, on the other side, as you can see, 
it's got that reflective coating. What has it done for me? Well, it's reduced the temperatures inside the canopy by about 10 to 15 degrees, if not more. So I should I'd say probably a bit more. When it was 52 degrees in here last summer, this summer, while I was up at Exmouth, uh, it was say 42 degrees or 45 degrees in the shade most of the days, it didn't get over 40 degrees inside the canopy. So it's definitely done something there. So super, super happy with that. Um, would I recommend it? Sure, absolutely. Um, it's, it's one of those things that a lot of people probably don't think about. I haven't done the internals of the doors just yet, so that is something I'm looking into as well. I wanna see if that also makes a difference. I'm sure that it would. But where I've also got those temperature reductions by putting some of that insulation in, I'm super, super happy with that. All right, so this is my little, uh, little cooking setup here. This is the uh, little gas burner. Let's see if it's actually gonna make the sound. Oh, it's getting there. <laughs> the song of my people. <laughs> Let me sing you the song of my people. <laughs> oh well, only does it once it gets hot, it's all good. See, happy days. <laughs> So, we'll be back in about, oh, I don't know, 10 minutes or so, maybe 15. We'll sit down in the shade and we'll, uh, we'll go through it. Cheers. All right, so a bit of a bit of Q&A time. Um, all right, so look, I've, I've received a few, uh, few questions from you guys, um, you know, not only through sort of social media, but uh, while I've been out in the field, you know, uh, Adelaide four-wheel drive show, Perth four-wheel drive show, uh, and just camping trips in general, people asking about the canopy, the, the whole setup with the rig. Um, but for the canopy side of things, um, look, we'll, we'll start it off. Uh, what was it? The first one was uh, construction. So it's a uh, it's marine grade aluminium construction. There are some numbers in there somewhere, but I can't re remember. Um, I'm not sure if it's actually quoted on the Mitz Alloy website or not, but I'm sure if you were to give the guys at Mitz Alloy a call or alternatively, get in to see a local rep, uh, whatever state you're living in, uh, I'm sure there'll be a uh, Mitz Alloy outlet somewhere. I know that here in Perth, you've got Adventure 4x4 in Rockingham, and over in uh, South Australia, you've got uh, Barossa Off-Road. So um, get in touch with those people. I think it's also on track. Is it on track, Fab, in Melbourne as well? And I'm not sure about the other guys in sort of New South Wales and, um, and up in Queensland either. So anyway, moving on along from that, uh, look, I've not noticed any, um, any defaults in any of the welds or joins or in any construction at all. It's quite solid. Very, very happy with that. And before I put any of the insulation inside the canopy, I did a really good um, thorough inspection of everything. Even took the drawers out and had a good look at, um, at all the seams, all the welds, all the joins, everything, and I didn't notice anything. Now, Bearing in mind, I had also had the Alucab rooftop tent, sorry, I'm just sweating here, it's a bit warm. Had the Alucab rooftop tent on the top as well. So I think they advertise at just under 80 kilos. Um, by the time you put your bedding in and all of that, you're sort of pushing that 90 odd kilo mark. Ooh, she is a bit warm today. <laughs> so you take that into account, plus the brackets and all the other stuff that you need to either mount the tent itself, uh, plus awnings or whatever else. So let's just round it up to say 100 kilos plus. So you know, on top of that, didn't have an issue. Not at all. It never affected any of the structural integrity or anything like that. So, um, you know, I got rid of the alley cab rooftop tent. It just wasn't suited to what I was wanting to do. Wasn't overly happy with the, uh, the, the final product of the alley cab rooftop tent. So I am looking into other, other options at the moment. Uh, one of those being the Bush Company. Um, so hopefully, this year sometime, uh, might be able to tee something up where I can um, uh, sort one of those out. That'd be fantastic. Seals, seals have been fantastic. Both the canopy doors have got the full dust seal all around the pinch mold seal. Uh, no dust and no water in any of the toolboxes on the left hand side, right hand side, or the canopy doors or even the trundle drawer. Completely dust proof. Um, now how would they go uh, when you're flooding them? Well, I haven't actually had this in that deep enough water to have, you know, to be, to be worried about it. Uh, would I be worried about it? I'll be honest, probably not. I don't think 
they would be, um, I, I don't think that they'd be all that bad at all. I think they'd be pretty good. So, um, yep, I've got full faith in the seals. Like a little bit of water in them if, you, if you're sort of really submerged. <laughs> so hopefully you wouldn't be submerged for too long. Um, and if you are, it's fresh water, not salt water. That salt water stuff, no way. Bad, bad jujus. All right, next bit, um, heat. Yes. So, it got hot. Um, Christmas last year got 52 degrees inside the canopy. Christmas this year didn't get above 40. Now, I'm only gonna attribute that to, yes, same weather conditions, if not actually harsher this summer. Noting um, I was up in Exmouth for Christmas and New Year's, and I noted that um, since installing insulation throughout the whole, well, 90 odd percent of the, uh, the canopy, that there was at least a 10 to 15 degree reduction in heat. So super, super happy with that. Next questions, next set next of stuff was the, uh, what sort of electrical system are you running? And uh, we've gone through it already, but it's the Red Arc system. So it's, uh, it was called the ultimate system when I purchased the canopy or, you know, put the deposit down to have it built. And they, Mids Alloy had its couple of tiers. That was its top tier at the time. They've since come out with the Elite package and the Elite comes out with uh, an extra solar panel comes out with a slightly large, well, not slightly larger, but um, a 3,000 watt pure sine wave inverter and an extra battery and four GPOs that are actually properly wired in and certified and tested by a proper electrician. So you don't have to worry about that. That's all sorted, that's all done. With mine, my setup, um, I'm pretty happy with what I've got. So I'm running the Red Arc TVMS Total Vehicle Management System coupled up to the Battery Manager 30, I believe it is. And Oh, what have I got? Two 100 amp hour lithium batteries, so I've got 200 amp hours, uh, 2000 watt pure sine wave inverter, and 180 watt solar panel on the roof. So that does quite well. I think moving forward, I'm going to investigate the option of putting a secondary panel up there. So, power wise, I think I have enough. I know that I've, I run my coffee machine every morning when I'm out camping, make one, maybe two coffees for the day, as well as uh, use the milk frother. So. Yeah, I like to get a bit darty sometimes and, and, and have a bit of, uh, bit of frothy milk too. So funnily enough though, that milk frother doubles as a, um, a, like a, a frappe maker, I guess you could say. So you can get awesome iced coffees out of that thing too. So it uh, works quite well. Never had an issue with it. Works quite well for that as well as uh, I've, had a, I've run a blender off it. I've run a, an induction cooker off it. So for me personally, no problems at all. Oh, and the Travel Buddy. So Travel Buddy oven. Yes, it's a 12 volt marine type crystal air oven, I think that's what it's called. Works perfectly. I've used that to do many a pork shoulder and turn that into uh, pulled pork for pulled pork sliders or whatever else. I've cooked meatloafs in it. I've cooked a cake in it at the Perth Fall Drive Show just to say that I could. Um, <laughs> nobody wanted any, so I got kind of stuck with having to eat most of it. So that didn't really work out very well at all. Uh, tasted all right, but I was happy with that. Um, water system in it, yep, so it's got the two tanks. Never had a problem with those, those things are fantastic. So I've got the, uh, the 30 litre water tank in the headboard and a 60 litre water tank underneath, which is why I'm only running a smaller trundle drawer uh, from the rear of the tray as well. Um, have I ever jacked the canopy off? That's a really good question. No, I haven't, and I don't know that I would unless there was an inherent need to do so. What I mean by that is, for whatever reason, that canopy needed to come off because the tray needed to come off, then that's the only reason I would actually take it off. I've built this setup to be able to go whenever I want. So if I'm going away for a weekend, I don't have to worry about, oh man, I've got to put the canopy back on, oh, I've got to line it up and do this and do this and that. Now, it probably doesn't seem like it's actually a hard thing to do. It's probably quite simple. Um, I've never had the need to. I want to keep this as it is but should the need arise, then yeah, absolutely. You can jack the canopy off and drive the ute out, no problems at all. And then obviously the two spares will have to go on the back or put one on or, or whatever. So there's, there's certainly options there. You know, if I had to, sure, I could. Why do I have two bin bags on the back of the canopy? I want my two spares. So one, certainly, bin bag for all your dirty rubbish and stuff like that. The other one, so the one on the right-hand side, I would usually put a few logs of firewood in um, ordinarily, yes, I'll take my chainsaw with me as well um, during the winter months. So if I know that I can cut down or cut up some wood, I'm not going to say I'm cutting down trees or anything like that, but if there's wood in a designated wood collection area, I'll chop up some wood and take it with me. But that's usually only if I've already burnt what I'm taking. I only take what I need for me. 
I'm not going to try and take a whole trailer load or full canopy load unless I need it. Um, that's just silly. So that's why I've got the second one there. As well as, you know, when I've tweaked mouth, you've got dirty gear or you've got wet gear, you know, like your snorkeling gear and all that sort of stuff. You can chuck that in one of your bags instead of putting it in the canopy. Yeah, it just makes sense to keep it outside instead of in. That's, that's, look, there's a whole load of questions and a lot of the questions are sort of very, very similar. So I think I'll probably just keep it at those questions for now. But if you do have any more, please send a message through either through Instagram on Jetfish Off-Road or leave a comment below, ask away any questions you've got about the canopy setup uh, with the tray. Um, I'm not exactly sure of the weight of the canopy either, so I'll just quickly just sort of throw that in there. Um, but you know, at the end of the day, I'm not really worried about that at the moment. Pros and cons. Well, pros, all of it, the whole thing. There is not one thing about that canopy I don't like. I love everything about it. Um, there's a little bit of space there. Actually, this would be a con. There's a little bit of space there in, um, in under the roof there between where the two, uh, two side trays, uh, you know, roof mounted trays sort of meet. There's probably about a foot there, but it runs from the front to the back of the canopy. I've not yet been able to find anything I can use that space for. Now, whether that's taken up by or, or been able to be utilized by the, uh, you know, the slide out pantry that comes, that's roof mount as well. I'm not sure, so I might see that soon. That is an option that I'm looking to go down in the future. Um, or if I went to the stand up, stand up fridge, would that sort of take up that room as well? Would it go in, in a bit deeper, in a bit further, a bit higher? I, I, I'm not sure, I would imagine so. So I think that space would probably get used there. That's, that's where I'll probably leave it as that. Um, I love the fact I've got my left hand toolbox for all my air up stuff. It keeps it nice and neat. It's away from everything. I love where I've got all my, my recovery gear in the back. That's all locked up. It's dirty, that's fine. It stays in that one drawer. Tools and stuff on this side with the jack, um, you know, your straps and other ropes and tie downs and other bits and pieces I usually keep in the right hand side. Everything has its place. So super, super happy with that. Not looking to change any of that at all. Um, yeah, love that, I think it's great. So, uh, any other cons? Uh, no, I've got no cons really. That, like I said, that con was only sort of maybe that space at the top. Pros, the whole canopy, the whole tray, absolutely love it. No issues with any of it at all. Would I make any changes? Potentially the fridge itself, I might go for the 130 litre upright fridge as opposed to what I've got now with the clear view slide. The reason being is weight. So the setup I've got now is about 30 to 40 kilos heavier than what the Bushman upright 130 litre fridge is. By going that way, yes, I save myself say 30 to 40 kilos worth of weight, but I go down in freezer size. So I go from having that half, half of the 75 litre uh, dual zone Dometic CFX3, <laughs> um, half of that being my freezer, to having just a small box freezer. I could use the center console fridge that I've got in there, which is also a Bushman's. Could turn that right down and use it as the freezer. But I like having it there as the fridge on long trips. You can pull out a cold drink, you can pull out some snacks or some fruit. It's just handy in that regard. So I've got to weigh up what's more important to me, you know, to have freezer space so I can, I go fishing, I can, you know, fill it up a fish and then sort of freeze it if I wanted to. Zupa dupers, I tell you. Up in Exmouth this trip at Christmas, New Year's, having the Zupa Dupas in there were an absolute godsend. So it's a uh, it's a tough one. I've got no, I don't know which way I'd go with it. I think at the moment I may keep it as it is um, until maybe get over the east coast later this year and actually sort of see some setups that have that bigger fridge and see how they set it up as well. Who knows? Might be able to take take advantage of that unused space at the top. Uh, slide out pantry. I'd love one. I would absolutely love to have a slide out pantry in that thing. I personally would go for the rooftop mounted one and I, I would change whatever I needed to um, on that left hand side of the canopy that's you know sort of bolted up so that shelf at the top there, I'd move it out or whatever else, move the travel buddy over, don't care. I could even put two travel buddy, um, travel buddy shelves there side by side, have the oven, then have a shelf and then have the slide out pantry. I reckon that'd work, that'd be pretty cool. Um, but yeah. Not sure that, uh, yeah, not sure of any other changes, but I think definitely doing that change there um, would be awesome, awesome. Um, a ladder on the back, absolutely. I'm sick and tired of climbing up the side of this thing to get up on the roof rack and tie down the swag, or whatever else. I need a ladder, I need that ladder on the back. It would be, oh, 
tell you. So if anybody wants to gift me a, uh, a ladder, <laughs> that'd be great. <laughs> Far out. So, yeah, get that ladder on the back. That would make life a lot easier. So much easier. So that's all the pros and cons. That's the questions that have been answered. Well, most of the questions. So, you know, look, if you've got more questions, please hit me up through the socials. So Instagram, go through Jetfish Off-Road. Jump on there, fire your questions away to me, send us a message. I'll do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. Now, on top of that, you could also put a comment down below for the description for the video. Now, I've got so many trips coming up this year. I'm going over the East Coast. I've got to get some four-wheel drive shows over there. So all you guys on the East Coast, come down to the shows this year. It's going to be fantastic to meet a lot of you guys um, You know, and actually get back over to the East Coast and go and do Fraser Island. I've done Fraser Island when I was in the Navy, but never, ever have I been on Fraser with a Forby, so take this big girl across, that'd be pretty sweet. All right, guys, look, I'm gonna wrap it up there. Time to find somewhere to go and jump into a swimming hole somewhere. It's like 35 degrees here. The camera's packed it in a couple of times because it's too hot. Now the battery on the camera is sort of alarming at me saying, hurry up, hurry up, hurry up. But uh, I hope you guys have liked this video. Uh, please like and subscribe. It helps me grow the channel and uh, get out there and be able to uh, provide this content for you guys. So, uh, yeah. Make sure you stay tuned to Jetfish. There's so much more coming for this year. Trips and, oh, it's going to be a very, very exciting 2023. So stay tuned. Cheers, guys.